Uh, hello everyone, my name is Stefan Janssen. I work at the uh, University of Rwanda since a bit more than 10 years time. Um, at the moment, I'm the acting director uh, of research and innovation at the College of Medicine and Health Sciences. I'm also the acting deputy director uh, at the Center for Mental Health. So I understand this is a workshop to motivate uh, young people uh, to engage and to put effort into research. And so I'm very uh, uh, glad that I can um, give a short introduction to you, unfortunately, by, um, by video, not in person, but it seems to be the truth uh, of our new world. Um, let me start by, uh, and I'm sure uh, you are all aware and people talk about it, about the importance of research for a university, um, but also for Rwanda as a country. Um, so in the view, uh, and in my personal view, but also the view of the college, research should be a key pillar of how the university functions. And um, one of the reasons for that is that if um, academic staff are engaged in research and a lot of high quality research is happening at the university, that is the best guarantee to make sure that we have improvement in teaching and we also um, have improvement in clinical care. So um, developing research capacity in universities is a way of just improving the overall quality uh, of what a university can offer, partially because in that way we attract people uh, who are bright, young people who are bright, young people who are ambitious. And that's the kind of environment you need to be a, a vibrant university. Um, now, um, with the College of Medicine and Health Sciences, we've, um, we've been thinking um, uh, in kind of a bigger or a larger version or a larger vision of where we want research to go. And uh, our vision statement at the moment is that we want the center of gravity in global health research to move from what we call the global north to the global south. Um, so concretely meaning that we want to establish research group and research capacity, which is on a similar level and of a similar quality as is happening in North University, like Karolinska University, Harvard University, uh, London Tropical Institute, all of those big institutions. We think that the future of global health research should be to build up a similar capacity and similar quality of, of research and teaching uh, uh, in Rwanda, in the whole of Africa, and we want to do that uh, with the College of Medicine and Health Sciences. That is quite a different vision from what is happening at the moment, where in global health research, it's, there is a clear distinction between the global north uh, institutions who at the moment um, are stronger, uh, are producing the most cited research, and we are partnering uh, often with those institutions. We are also doing some high quality research in Rwanda already, but we are not on that same uh, level. And so um, uh, one way of looking at that is um, it used to be like maybe 10 to 20 years ago um, that we had a few people who had the right level of education, right? You need a PhD. Um, and uh, preferably from an institution where that is functioning at a very high level. And 10 to 20 years ago, there was very few people who were uh, qualified in that way. I think uh, over the, because of all the programs that have been running over the last 10, 20 years, that has changed. And there's actually a lot of people who are highly qualified and, and very well educated, uh, also at the College of Medicine and Health Sciences. So now we need to take that to a next step and find a way to organize ourselves so we become really a research-led uh, institution. And this is uh, the point where uh, uh, I want to talk, especially to the youth and the, the young uh, researchers among you, 
uh, because it is your generation uh, that will make this vision a reality. Um, and um, maybe to come back on this vision uh, once more, it might look like uh, a stretch, like it might look like overly ambitious and not realistic to want to function maybe on the same level as Harvard University is functioning. Uh, but if you think it through, many um, Rwandan PhD holders, uh, they can have and do have successful careers when they stay in Global North universities and they're very productive and, and very successful researchers and make a big uh, research career. Um, the problem is that in uh, coming back to Rwanda, people have the same level of capacity. We just don't have this research tradition and, uh, and the necessary support systems and incentive systems that allow us to be uh, successful in that way. But uh, in and on itself, the capacity, human resource capacity is there. And so it's actually not such a big step as it looks like. We could take an example from countries like Singapore or, or what we call the Asian Tigers, like South Korea and Vietnam, Thailand, some other countries who really made a very quick uh, jump. They were maybe 30 years ago, academically, they were on a comparable level uh, as Rwanda is today. And uh, then they made a big investment, they made a big economic jump. Uh, and at the same time, they invested a lot in, the, uh, uh, in academia and they progressed very, very quickly and became stronger research institutions. And so that's the ambition uh, that we also have uh, for the college. Um, so let me come again, like why the youth is uh, really important and the young researchers uh, are, are crucial in this and, it's, and we need your ambition and your engagement um, to, to become a strong research institution. Um, when I look at the um, at a, uh, at a generation of researchers now, uh, many of us need to cover a, a wide range of expertise and also have uh, important administrative and other responsibilities. And um, so this concept of having very strong, very established research groups is not a a full reality at the moment. Uh, as you know, there is a number of very successful researchers who, who are implementing a number of big international research grants. Um, people like uh, Prof. Leon Mutesa, uh, Stephen Rolisa and others, uh, Alinu uh, Omubieyi, there is many of them who are really performing research on a top level. But as an institution, this is not yet happening. So we need to take the example of those leaders and then, uh, and then specialize and create specialized research groups uh, who can then build up capacity and grow over time. Um, one example that we could look at is the mental health and behavior research group um, where, uh, of which I am part of myself, in which we are uh, running a number of research projects and uh, we are involving um, uh, graduates, some with a bachelor degree, some with a master degree, some with a PhD degree. We hire them through research projects and we create a team of researchers together. And everyone is developing their own expertise. Some become experts in uh, health economics, some become uh, experts in biostatistics, other become uh, experts uh, in genetic analysis, and so in that way, we get a pool and a team of specialists. And when we create projects, we have the necessary expertise um, to buy ourselves and buy our own team in the College of Medicine and Health Sciences, uh, make successful, uh, implement successful, uh, or be successful in winning research grants and then uh, publishing about. So uh, that is uh, what I also hope uh, for you, that you feel motivated and that you um, uh, want to put in the effort um, to become um, a global health researcher. Um, now, um, having motivated you so much at the same time, 
I want to stress that it's not easy to become a researcher. And in my view, not everyone is a researcher. Um, it takes a, a, a certain level of curiosity and, uh, and, and it's part of your personality. Some people have, are more inclined to be clinical experts and, uh, and take satisfaction in helping patients and providing care. And that is a very uh, important and a very noble um, uh, research pathway, uh, which I can only encourage. Um, uh, and if that is your career, then you can have a wonderful career. Uh, for some people, research is something that comes natural to them of which they are interested. Um, and um, and um, um, but it's not it's not automatic. Right. So one way of looking at it is, I think, to be successful as a researcher, you really need to invest a lot in yourself. Um, so I talk about the business model of doing uh, research in, in Africa. Um, so what you do is you actually invest in yourself and you invest in yourself by studying more, by reading more, um, by writing up more, by working in a team more. Uh, also by failing and not giving up and continuing and then failing again and not giving up because this is the vision you have for yourself. And it never stops. So um, um, also at my stage of my career and of all senior colleagues, if you are a researcher, uh, you keep on developing, you keep on studying, you keep on uh, trying to improve on yourself. So. Um, um, so that makes that that's not, um, so it's a special career, right? So you need to have a real um, motivation and it needs to be part of, of, your, uh, of your personality, of who you are to want to take that path. Uh, one, maybe a more funny way of, um, of saying it is you have to be uh, somewhat crazy or somewhat foolish to become a researcher because the effort you need to put into it, it's, it's larger than the gains. And it certainly is that case in the beginning. So in the beginning, you will put so much effort in trying to write up um, a manuscript, trying to get a publication out, and then it is refused. And then you try again, or you try to win a grant, and then you fail and you're not successful. Because you need to build up, you need to train yourself really to a high level before you start having some success in getting a publication out and that type of thing. And that learning process, that investment is, is, is a large investment and takes a lot of effort. I'm not saying it um, to discourage you. Um, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm saying it to uh, encourage you to take the, the courage and to put in the, the energy that it needs um, 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 because only those who, who really put in uh, all that amount of effort become then really successful, right? So in my own experience, what I've seen, and let me be a bit more practical uh, now. So I think if you look at yourself and you say, well, I'm ready to make that investment. Uh, I'm ready to, um, uh, to put on this, the, the, this time and, and direct myself in that way. Um, to, so if, if you say, well, okay, I'm ready to do this, um, then um, um, I lost my train of thoughts for a bit. Um, so th there is a couple of ways in which you can be successful. Um, and the first one is, um, what you need to be is you need to be reliable. So if someone writes you an email, you make sure that you answer to the email and you don't let the email uh, stay if you don't know the answer exactly or you don't really know or maybe you did something that was not completely correct and then you don't answer immediately. So always be reliable, always be responsive. So people know they can count on you even if you make a failure, yeah? It's not important to be perfect. It's not important to have all of the skills. What is important is that you always work to the best of your capacity. 
So you always push yourself. So if somebody asks you maybe to do some literature review, um, you don't just look up something and you say, this looks like, this looks like a literature review, this is good enough. Yeah? In research, good enough doesn't exist. The only thing that exists is, is this the best that you can possibly do? And if that is your work ethics, if that is the way you want to work, uh, then you can become successful uh, as a researcher. So the whole um, idea, and I'm sure you heard about it, um, is, uh, is that if you want to be a researcher, you, you take ownership. You say, this is what I want to achieve. This is what I want to know. And this is what I want to produce. You don't do it to impress other people or to convince other people. You do it because you have this inner motivation to demonstrate or to figure out how is this problem working? Why are these people suffering? What can we do to help or understand this disease? Uh, how in the, in the topic of this study, how can we help people with mental health problems? What are the real issues in early child development? And, um, and what innovative ways, maybe something you learned from your, from your parents, from your grandparents, uh, how can I translate this knowledge into research and solve a real problem and make it happen? So it's, it's you yourself who has to motivate yourself uh, to answer the question. Um, let me conclude by concretely um, uh, explaining how the Directorate of Research can uh, help you um, in, uh, in developing your career as a researcher. Uh, so the first uh, opportunities come that we try to um, uh, through the whole college, and sometimes it's organized by, by the centers, uh, as this training is, sometimes it's organized through the schools. So we offer a number of trainings, uh, research trainings and other trainings uh, that are uh, sometimes also accessible to students. So if you see those opportunities, make sure to apply and make sure to attend and so improve your skills. There is also a lot of material online at the moment uh, on Coursera and other of these learning platforms, but also on YouTube. Um, there is also online books, there is all articles, many of them are open access. So there is many, many opportunities to learn uh, by guided training or by self-training. A second very concrete uh, opportunity that I wanted to share is the United for Health um, initiative. And you can go to the United for Health uh, website, which is United for Health, written in one word, dot uh, rw for Rwanda. Uh, and there you can subscribe to our mailing list. In this mailing list, you will learn uh, or you will be informed about opportunities for winning small research grants um, or um, 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 maybe um, for different trainings that are happening in Rwanda or outside and for different um, master or PhD opportunities that could be relevant for you and to which you can uh, apply. There is also uh, the College of Medicine and Health Sciences website, where often we, uh, we present those opportunities. We also have uh, Twitter accounts you can follow uh, on the United for Health and for the Directorate of Research. So that is a, a way in which you can be informed on the opportunities that are there. So thank you so much for having given me this opportunity to, um, to have uh, addressed you. Uh, I would much have preferred to be with you so we could interact and, uh, and exchange some questions. Um, through uh, Vincent and Joseph, who is here with me, uh, you can always reach out to me if you have more questions or if you want to know more how you can develop yourself as a researcher. Thank you so much and uh, enjoy the rest of the workshop.